Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hello, hello, it's Yokai Kajidori here. And on behalf of my business partner, Trevor Stockwell, and the amazing team here at World Outsourcing Solutions, want to welcome you to this special episode of Enlightened Entrepreneur. You can find us at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com, where we specialize in providing business owners from all walks of life with highly trained, highly skilled virtual assistants. We are the go-to center of all your outsourcing needs based here in the United Kingdom. Hi guys, it's Yokai again. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Enlightened Entrepreneur. Today, my special guest is Chris Harvin, uh, the COO, designer, and fabricator for an upstart keepsake and memorial company called Memento. Chris has been in business for nearly 25 years, working in woodworking, 15 years in web development, and the multiple previous attempts of employment. Now, since 2006, uh, he uh, said goodbye to the employment uh, arena and started working full-time on his own business. Now, welcome to the call, Chris. Hey, thank you. It's such a pleasure having you on the call. And you are in a very interesting industry that I'm hoping we're going to uh, have an opportunity to hear how you market your business uh, in, uh, uh, you know, online and in many other, uh, other uh, spaces. Sure. To get us started today, Chris, tell us a bit about your story of how you got started uh, in business uh, and what you were doing prior to jumping onto this business, which you're doing on full time. Absolutely. So my penchant for entrepreneurship really sources back to an uncle who always taught me to question everything and to not be afraid to even question myself and change my opinion with new information. And that's always been a part of who I am because of his influence. But I also saw my dad working as a machinist and having trouble with uh, labor unions and being unemployed. And I saw that I didn't want that life. And so it's always been a goal to do something more for myself. And I didn't always know what that was going to be. Uh, it, you know, I started out in high school being really interested in music and visual arts, and I pursued both. But uh, the visual arts went out. I went to art school, learned how to become a woodworker, as well as traditional drawing, painting, and design. And those skills sort of are broad-based. I can apply them in any creative field and feel pretty confident that I could make a start or make a go at anything in the visual arts. My focus, though, is on objects, uh, making things by hand. I very much feel that when something's made by hand with natural, honest materials, it has an honesty and an integrity that you can't always get from uh, machined objects. Right. So I started several small woodworking companies along the way, doing woodworking, custom woodworking, and that is a brutal way to try to make a living, depending on where you're living. If I lived in New York City or in London or LA, Chicago, there might be a better chance of there being potential consumers. But in Cleveland, you know, Cleveland is still growing. Cleveland is an upstart and uh, turning out to be a wonderful place to have grown up and be uh, self-employed right now. So things are turning around here. And uh, the you know when people ask me how we ended up getting involved with the funeral industry, the flippant answer is death. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law passed away very young and we found that the options for urns were oh, depressing. Right. And we wanted to bring something that was meaningful, something that a person could touch and connect with the memories that they had of that person and not feel like they had to get something that was made overseas, made poorly, and you know, it was just a, a piece of 
um, a piece of machined, heartless, and meaningless for the, the person who is left behind. And so yeah. that, that was our idea and our concept. And, you know, being employed in web development while all of these other things are going on, right. we, we grew it slowly. My wife became an art teacher. And so we've been building our little empire slowly and carefully, especially because of the bumps and bruises I took with other ventures. We've, uh, we've wanted to fund it ourselves, to bootstrap it. Right. And so we took our time. But in 2006, I uh, took my employer as a web developer, where they were a right. product development firm, and I used a magical bit of judo and turned them into my first client. <laughs> I was and, actually going to ask you how you transitioned from being an employee to become an uh, employer or a business owner. And yeah. how you got your first client? So you jump up there. Uh, yeah, we, you know, our listeners will be very happy to to hear about that story. Yeah, any time that you're thinking of jumping ship, uh, if you're in an industry where doing so can make you more attractive as a contractor rather than an employee, because employers always want to reduce their costs, and uh, contractors are generally cost less than employees. Right. You can figure out a way to make that work. That is a really nice way to make a transition if you also have at least one other project or client lined up. Right. right. Let's talk about the mindset uh, transformation that you had to go through uh, in 2006, you know, when you mm -hmm. went full time in your uh, memorial business. Well, you know, what did you have to do? Uh, I don't know if I knew what I knew now that I would make the jump the same way that I did. All right. Uh, you know, you, it requires a certain amount of naivete to just jump in. And no matter how prepared you are, no matter what kind of war chest you have built up, there are still going to be bumps and bruises and lessons. And a lot of businesses are started by technicians, not... Right people who really understand what it takes to run a business. And so there are going to be things that you have to learn along the way. If you're successful the first year, great. If you're successful the first three, even better. But once you're starting getting to five years, you start to realize that you need to become a manager rather than just a technician and you know your own employee. You actually have to get to the point where you need to hire people, start managing the business and growing it in such a way. And uh, with the web development business that I started in 2006, I realized I didn't want that kind of company. Right. I didn't want to be that kind of manager or sell that kind of product. And so the transition to then taking on uh, the earn, keepsake, and memorial business more seriously became a natural one. And that is really where my heart lies and where I know I can make a bigger difference and really connect with human need and help people who are grieving. Incredible, incredible. With that in mind, what had to go, what transformation in your mind that you had to go through uh, during that time? I don't have any formal business training. I don't have any marketing training. I've had exposure to marketing as a result of doing design work for other companies. Right. Incorporating those lessons into our own business and how to apply them. Right. And really transitioning into being on all the time. I, I, I am the kind of person who, if I see a problem, I inherently start thinking about it and try to solve it. So I have that inherently. But once you start something that is bootstrapped and you're trying to promote via social media and a website, you really have to start looking at every single situation in your life that's social. You know, there, there's an opportunity potentially with connecting with the right people in order to create a connection where one may never have existed before. And so this always on sort of mentality, but also being able to turn it off uh, because you need to also stay sane. You know, right. it, you have to be passionate and driven about it enough where it doesn't make you crazy to think about it all the time, but you also have to know when to just zone out and, and get your brain out of it for at least a little while. Yes, yes, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, given the background that you have, which is a variety of, you know, it's widespread, yeah. uh, you know, which of those uh, transferable skills do you think you use the most now in your new uh, venture? Design. Right. Uh, thinking through problems, not just product problems or consumer problems, but any problem within business and flipping it around and looking at it from the end use in order to attempt to find a way to hack through it, to come up with my own solutions or combination of different concepts in order to uh, either create a new product, a new way of doing business or reaching new business. Right. Right. Uh, you know, as I'm uh, listening to you, I am reminded of uh, some of the questions I get asked all the time when I speak at uh, events, and I'm going to ask you uh, those questions <laughs> here. Uh, what are the top three things that somebody should know in order to be successful in business? Like you've been in business for the last six years. You, you must be doing something right for you to keep on going. What would you say are the top three things uh, that has kept you going up to this point? and having this success that you're having? A persistence. Right. Persistence is number one. I mean, there have been so many times where things were grim, things were dark. And, you know, sometimes that bottom that you hit is the place where you need to get to figure out what's your next step going to be. You right. know, every failure is a lesson and you've got to be willing to fail a whole bunch of times um, and even be willing to something that you're passionate or hopeful that is going to be successful can uh, turn out to not be. But you needed to get that lesson in order to get to the next place. And there, the lessons never stop. No matter how success, so successful you are, there's, there's always more to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what else, uh, do you, you know, in line with what you just shared there? Adaptability. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's real easy to get caught up in a dream or a concept and how you want it to play out. But, you know, if you can adapt it and change it to an existing situation or the market, uh, because it always comes back to, you know, you might make or you might design or you might have a wonderful idea. But if the market isn't ready for it um, or if you can't get the market ready for it, you right. need to adapt. Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, as we know, if you don't adapt, you're the one who's let, get left behind. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, what would you say to somebody who's getting started and is hearing these things that you're saying? Uh, how uh, can they be prepared for, you know, for, uh, you know, for, for the journey ahead? If you don't have any business background, reading some key books about business like the E-Myth Revisited, um, and participating in online forums uh, for entrepreneurs. Uh, Reddit has a couple of great ones. And just getting your head in as much uh, of the field that you're involved in and business in general and looking for lessons, other people's lessons that you can learn from. Right. Um, you know, there. I don't, I think there's a lot that you can learn from the success stories like reading G Steve Jobs' book, et cetera. Mm, yes. Um, but looking and examining other people who are bootstrapping or struggling or on the verge, uh, there might be more there that can be useful than, you know, someone whose perception has been uh, affected by the amount of success that they've had and forget the help they've had along the way, the mm -hmm. connections that they've made and, and the people who've been there for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's talk about uh, uh, for a moment how you market your memorial business right now. I've been looking forward to hearing this part for uh, since you started communicating. Uh, we, our website, I first put up a website for us in around 2011. Right. And it's been through several iterations. And as a side business, it didn't get as much attention as it deserved. But in 2012, when we started getting much more serious, uh, we put together a nice site. And that has been, that and social media have been the primary methods of connecting with customers. And we do get a fair amount of people who find us. Uh, our site is put together well, so the SEO works pretty effectively. 
um, we are we have better numbers on just raw searches rather than referrals from um, paid advertising. So we've done some Google ads. And then you have to have a pretty big budget for that to actually pan out. So I mean, if you're only doing 100 bucks a month, it's really it's really not enough. And so we get the longest visits and the, the most positive traffic from organic search. And, and building a great website is really important for that. And looking for opportunities on social media, um, you know, we have to be very careful because um, the, the product we sell, it can seem kind of garish if we try to market it the wrong way. So we have to be really subtle. You know, we can't walk down the street clanging a bell asking for your dead right. because, you know, that's, you know, that's not appealing. Uh, no one, most people don't want to deal with the passing of a loved one until it's absolutely on their doorstep and completely understandably. So we have started doing trade shows and that has been the most effective way for us to get in front of the people who can be our retail partners. And uh, we've done one, we're doing another one in a couple months and then another big one next fall. Right. And from our understanding of talking to other people in the field, startups need pretty much two years in those trade shows to start being taken seriously by distributors and funeral directors. And, you know, trade shows are crazy. They're so expensive. They require so much time. And it's, so oh, man, it's terrifying. <laughs> And yes. it can really seem like a waste, but I walked away with so many lessons after that first show. And, you know, it can only go up from here. Incredible. Incredible. Let's talk for a moment about, you know, uh, running a company uh, like yourself. Uh, you know, what would you say are the uh, most common problems that people experience when they're, uh, you know, getting started with their new idea? Yeah, accounting, paperwork. You know, it's, <laughs> it's it's easy enough to start a business and and get the paperwork for it. You know, that you can do yourself. Uh, but I mean, for me, paperwork. I <laughs> I just had a massive three or four day long filing that I was finding things from 2011, 2010 that I had never put in the right place. And especially in a home, it's really hard to establish a system for what is this that this person has sent me, organization has sent me. Uh, I don't necessarily want to throw it out or recycle it. I probably need it. Where does it go? Uh, you know, and an accounting software that is easy to use and intuitive that can talk to or that your accountant can talk to uh, or use is a, a really huge time saver and money saver for taxes. You might pay a little more upfront for something online, but it is... Uh, it's been it's been a huge time saver. Just have transactions from your bank, from PayPal, or wherever you do your processing, uh, as well as any other credit card account. Just automatically show up in a register is massively helpful. Incredible. Which accounting software do you use? Uh, uh, I, I hate to say it because there are there are more interesting, lighter weight, less lugubrious options out there. But uh, QuickBooks Online. Incredible, incredible. A lot of my clients use that as well. Uh, yeah. I thought they, they, there may be any other, but that, that, that is a good one. Uh, and for our listeners, you know, uh, if you haven't figured out, again, QuickBooks Online uh, is a great uh, uh, software to use. As we're coming toward the end of our time uh, together here, do you have any service that you would want to bring to the attention of our listeners? Yeah, there are amazing alternatives in the funeral industry, not just for how you know your future plans can be made, but the plans for um, an existing situation, you can seek them out. There are the rules vary depending on where you live, of course, right. but uh, there are lots of wonderful, unique products out there. We offer some of them at MementoMemorials.com, but there is probably somebody in your town who can help you have the type of funeral and remembrance that either you want for yourself or a loved one. Incredible. Let's talk for a moment what to look out for if you are looking for a funeral services uh, and you've never done it before. What should they be looking out for? Uh, someone who tells you embalming is mandatory 
is something to watch out for uh, in a negative way because there are many times where it isn't necessary. Uh, someone who wants to sell you a three or four thousand dollar casket that's going to get burned in a crematorium, anyhow, um, you know, if you are persistent and you're talking to someone who has heart and wants to communicate with you and make the right service and memory for your family, they'll be w willing to listen and work with whatever request you have as long as it's legal. Incredible, incredible. Uh, you, you know, if, say, for example, our listeners here wants to get in touch with you, how easily or where can they find you? Uh, I do all of our phone calls and customer service online. Uh, so we have a phone number. It is in the U.S. It's 216-647-0043. And our website has a contact form right on the top bar. I answer those. I'll get back to you and answer any questions you have, uh, whether it's about the funeral industry or about any of the products we offer. I'm, I'm there. Incredible, incredible. Going back to talking to entrepreneurs, people who are running their own business. Sure. Uh, if you were to give them one advice uh, for them to continue uh, what they're doing, what would that be? Have a partner right. who is understanding and knows that things are going to be weird if you're working from home. <laughs> you, might, you might be in the house, you might be in the kitchen, but you're at work. Yes. And... There are probably, regardless of how understanding or uh, kind your partner may be, there will be transition. There will be lessons for you and your household about how having someone working in it works with having other people living in it. Uh, it is, it will take understanding. It will take time. Incredible. And just be patient with it. Uh, and uh, it will all come together in the end. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, Chris, thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, my pleasure and sharing your words of uh, knowledge and wisdom rather that you've gleaned over these 25 years of doing business, uh, you know, from all walks of life. And for the last uh, six years where you've been focused uh, in living as an entrepreneur, and we want to wish you all the success in what you're doing. Hey, and, thanks. Yes, and for our listeners, uh, there you have it. Uh, Chris, another entrepreneur here for you who is living the dream, living life uh, on his own terms, you know, uh, really not giving up on his dreams. I encourage you that as you are listening to this time, uh, to this interview and many other interviews that we have, you implement what you are learning. And if you've got any questions, uh, do send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. And if you want to get in touch with Chris again, you can uh, email us and we'll be able to put you in touch. Uh, and one more time, Chris, give us uh, the details of where they can find you. Memento Memorials. That's M E M E N T O memorials.com and 216 647 0043. Incredible. Once again, thank you uh, guys for being with us. And uh, Chris, uh, have a great day. Thanks for being thank with you. us. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistant service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 